Land use might seem like a self-explanatory term, but it has a very specific definition with immense consequences for the way we live, work, and go about our daily lives. Everywhere we look, the use of land is highly regulated, and in the United States, the use of land is regulated at every level of government. But the regulation of land uses is most conspicuous and most consequential at the local level. In fact, land use is the central concept for planning as it's been practiced for over a century in the United States. Every kind of plan created by planning departments at the city and county level around the United States decides the future of land, whether that means comprehensive plans, general plans, community plans, etc., etc. Zoning codes are then used as the legal tool to enforce and implement those land use plans. So far, we've been talking about land use very abstractly, but to really understand the term, we have to talk about some specific types of land uses. One of the most obvious kinds of land use is residential, which includes the houses, apartments, and condominiums that we think of when we think of home. Most cities in the United States are, by design, dominated by residential land uses. Moreover, most of the residential housing allowed in most of the United States consists entirely of single-family detached homes, the homes with yards and two-car garages that are most commonly associated with suburbia. An article published by the New York Times in June 2019 quantified the amount of land devoted entirely to residential uses. In Los Angeles, for example, 75% of the city is zoned exclusively for single-family residential uses. In Portland, Oregon, it's 77%. In Charlotte, North Carolina, it's 84%. In Arlington, Texas, it's 89%. Other common and easily recognizable land use types include commercial and industrial. When some combination of uses is allowed in neighborhoods or on individual parcels, it's called mixed use. Land use planning has its origins in the desire to separate residential neighborhoods from the pollution created by industrial businesses. The separation of uses became so common that it has its own term, or what planners call Euclidean zoning. While the separation of land uses might have started with good intentions for health and prosperity, this kind of land use regulation has also created numerous negative consequences like congestion, the pollution of air and water, and the emissions that cause climate change. Also, the separation of land uses has historically been used as a tool of discrimination and segregation. Because of the negative consequences and racist history of the separation of land uses, many cities and even entire states have begun to discard some of their most restrictive land use regulations. Minneapolis was the first large city in the country to ban single-family zoning citywide, allowing residential developments of up to three units on lots previously reserved solely for single-family detached homes. Land use is a term used very specifically by planners, but it has tremendous consequences for the economy, the earth, and society. Even if you're not an urban planner, understanding what people mean when they say land use can influence the way you see your community and the broader world. And most importantly, changing the world often starts with the ground right beneath our feet.